The sheriff's office tells me that it should be done by this time tomorrow night, but to be honest, it could be much sooner than that. If you take a look here, this was all wreckage not two hours ago. They've been moving cars almost nonstop. Here, there is a sign pointing toward uh, the building that says it's perhaps the school, the school building for the church, but again, uh, we don't know that exactly. I only see two fire trucks here at the moment, but there's a big first responder presence down the hill. Police, Hemsey, fire trucks, again, we don't know if anybody is hurt. We don't even know if anybody was in the building, but we're going to be working to get that information here in a bit. Apparently, the gas could be heard literally shooting out. So they came in, evacuated the homes. They now have monitors on each end of the street. So where we are right now and down to the end of the street right there. And right now they have hazmat crews going through each home, making sure that they're ready to go before anybody can go back in. And it just so happens in an unrelated incident, there is also a another gas leak right now at Hampton Cove that members of the Huntsville Fire and Rescue Team just left to go uh, attend to. So again, that is unrelated, but certainly a number of gas leaks taking place here now. Yeah, Elizabeth, right now, Huntsville Police still has the road blocked off. A handful of officers still gathering evidence. Huntsville Fire and Rescue are actually here, I'm told, to help clean up the scene. You can see a fire truck actually uh, pulling away as we speak. Now, this, of course, the area Area where Officer Clardy Huntsville Police say was shot and ultimately killed as part of a stack, a drug enforcement investigation. This is a graph of all 18 fire departments that the county funds over the last 15 years. This is Monrovia. It's the highest funded department by more than $130,000. And some fire chiefs tell me that Monrovia's gain is coming at others' loss. Madison County residents rely on their volunteer firefighters every day. Some volunteer chiefs say the money they rely on isn't coming. Some equitable funding would be nice. Killingsworth Cove Chief Jamie Sandmeyer says his station is struggling just to keep the lights on. It's currently funded at $43,000 a year, the lowest in the county. Since 2011, the county commission has only given his station an extra $18. My money's gone. By the time I got it this month, it went out the door. It's already been, it's already been um, accounted for. Sandmeyer says truck payments, gear replacement, and basic utilities mean his department is reliant on donations. Keel Mountain is also funded at the bottom of the county, and Chief Jimmy Maynard echoed the concerns. Money's a big thing. We have damage to an engine. Last couple of times it's cost us almost $20,000 a time to repair. Both say an appropriation of roughly $60,000 would cover their basic expenses. However, they say Chairman Dale Strong has used his influence on the county commission's budget vote to favor Monrovia, where he's a volunteer firefighter. Sandmeyer called it a betrayal. He's going to take, count, take care of the district that he lives in and where his family is and where he has business investments than he will the rest of the county. It is my honor to accept the Republican nomination to be the next chairman of the Madison County Commission. Since Strong was elected chairman, Monrovia has received more than a third of all funding increases, a $120,000 bump. In that time, nine stations have either seen their funding go stagnant or go down. I think it's easy to justify. You look at it, 587,000 was collected from that district. Uh, you return 325, that means that uh, you're only getting 55 cents on return on what the people are paying in on taxes. He says because Monrovia pays more in property construction taxes, it gets more for its volunteer fire department. Because others pay less, they get less. So I came to the courthouse here to try and get documents on how much each area pays. The chief financial officer, the tax collector, and the tax assessor all say they don't keep track of that information. Strong also says Triana, Gurley, Owens Crossroads, and New Hope don't pay the county taxes that fund their departments. The funding for three of those stations have been stagnant or gone down in the last 10 years, while Triana has seen a $2,000 increase. I was able to confirm that New Hope and Triana don't pay into the taxes, while Gurley and Owens Crossroads leadership have not gotten back with me. I believe in helping everyone 
but the big thing is, is you've got to be able to help yourself. But as for Killingsworth Cove in Keel Mountain, the chiefs say something needs to change. Our voices don't count. We don't have a voice. We're told to man up and deal with it and go, go fundraise because that money came from Monrovia and it's going back to Monrovia. Again, I thought we were one county. Open to any discussion, we can debate it all day long statistically, um, but I can tell you this right here, uh, I think we're fortunate to have the volunteers that we have in Madison County. The next budget won't be debated until September, and there's a lot more to this story. You can go to WAFF.com right now and see how your station is funded. For WAFF, I'm Chris Joseph. Liz, that's a photo of the late Tommy Pierce. He passed away at Tut Fan in August after six years at the home. His granddaughter gave us permission to use these photos after we ran the original story last Monday. She claims there was physical abuse at Tut Fan, and she's not alone. Tommy Pierce was a D-Day veteran, a Purple Heart recipient, and allegedly abused at the Tut Fan Nursing Home in October 2017. His granddaughter, Amanda Childress, sent us her story about his time there. She says her mother visited him after being told he had red rings around his eyes. Childress then says, She asked my grandfather if he fell or if an employee had done that to him. And he stated clear as day that, quote, An employee did this. He had several falls while he was a resident there, but he had never before blamed the nursing home staff for anything. They pursued a criminal investigation, but nothing came of it. She says Pierce became suicidal after the incident and died in August 2018. In the aftermath of that original report, I was contacted by an employee who still works at the home. That person is a caregiver, someone who's been at the home for a number of years. They requested to remain anonymous, citing concerns of retaliation. The caregiver says all the claims made by the former employees in the original report are true. The current employee claims to have seen four separate patients suffering from black eyes that could not be self-inflicted. The caregiver says the administration was aware of that abuse by the time the employee saw it, but it's unclear what action was taken. The employee claims to have seen as many as seven veterans afflicted with skin mites in a single wing. The caregiver says the administration did end up treating that entire hall. The employee claims never to have seen bed bugs in the home, but says laundry workers would call out sick because they were worried about being infected. The caregiver sent this photo to show the resulting laundry backup. The Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs owns the home and is aware of the allegations of abuse. Commissioner Kent Davis says he's asked the Alabama Department of Public Health to investigate the home in response to the claims. Now that we've asked for third parties to be involved in this, I think all of it should be involved. They should take a look at all of that to see if there are indeed systemic issues in addition to the specific allegations that were raised. HMR Veterans Services runs the day-to-day -day operations of the home. It hasn't yet returned a request for comment on this story. Davis says the company is in the process to renew its contract at the home, but any connection between the bidding and investigation is speculative. Let's do this. Let's not put the cart before the horse. We need to get through the investigation process first, and we'll deal separately with the completely different issue of the contract rebid process. Now, that story only contained a portion of the allegations against the home. You can find a very in-depth story on the latest claims and that state investigation right now on WAFF.com. If you or a loved one is concerned about someone at any nursing home, you can contact this number on your screen. It's the Alabama Department of Public Health's hotline. Liz.